Hi, this is Captain Drew Cavanaugh of Florida Inshore Fishing Charters and Mosquito Lagoon Site Fishing Charters located in East Central Florida on the world famous Mosquito Lagoon and North Indian River Lagoon System here in New Smyrna Beach, Oak Hill, Edgewater, Titusville and Cocoa Beach just east of Orlando. And today we're going to do part number two on our series of uh, how to catch redfish, trout, and black drum. And the second part is going to be over uh, behavior, habitat, um, feeding, and the area of redfish, trout, and drum. And it, you know, it's going to, all in one video, it's going to be broken down into subparts for the redfish, trout, black drum. But typically, uh, they're all the same creature. They almost have the same habits. There's slight nuances and differences, and we'll go over that here shortly. Let's first start off with. Um, I'm going to talk about all three of these, the generalization of them at once here. If you're new to this, what these videos are going to do, it's going to help those of you that are new to this that say, man, I've never caught these fish. I'm used to slinging big egg sinkers and just throwing out a chunk of mullet and saying, okay, in five hours something might come by. You live here in Florida. Um, now I'm going to specifically talk about Florida red fishing on the flats. I know there's red fish in Texas, Louisiana, North Carolina in other places that I'm not sure how these tactics will work they might work there or not but in Florida these will work whether you're in Everglades, Fort Myers, Jacksonville, Tampa you know the Mosquito Lagoon wherever else I mean the lagoon is right behind my shoulder a few hundred yards so it doesn't matter but let's talk from my experience my professional experience here in this area um, area these fish obviously I just went over that they're known to be in a subtropic warm Atlantic salt waters that can sometimes be in fresh water the redfish can uh, trout black drum eh, not so much so focus on saltwater estuaries the Atlantic coast Gulf Coast uh, you know that area like that Texas coastline so we've narrowed that down um, you know if you're living in the Keys Isle Marauder or something like that you know, I would be saying, why would you want redfish when you've got permit bonefish, tarpon, you know, yellowtail? So there's going to be some common sense apply. You're not going to be sitting in Ohio going, okay, so I need to go out to Lake Erie and target these fish. Come on. What we're going to do here is we're going to focus on the areas that you look for as far as flats. Um, when you're fishing the lagoon or Indian River lagoon system, um, redfish, trout, and black drum are typically shallow water feeders, especially the drum and redfish. They like to get onto water, you know, this shallow, this steep, you know, move up onto the flats. And the reason why they do that, they're looking for things like crabs, shrimp, uh, snails, worms, bait fish. And those are up on the flats because it's a sanctuary for them. It's shallow water. Now, the only thing that's on everybody's mind out there, not us, but the animals, is death from above. So when you're in this deep of water and you're swimming or crawling around, any kind of shadows or any of that, they've got ospreys, pelicans, um, you know, laughing gulls, all egrets, herons, all kinds of birds of prey and birds that feed out there, ducks, that scare these things to death. So when you're flats fishing always use stealth and tactics and think of your shadow and all that so that more goes back to the one of the other parts we're going to do about tactics and how do you do this but i'm explaining to you the area and the habitat that they like they like to get up onto the flats they can feed um so if you're fishing an area and say you know a square mile is five six feet deep but you know way over here is an area that is you know going to go from six feet to four feet to three feet to two feet to 15 18 12 10 inches for say a thousand square acres look at that area go up there especially if there's drop-offs and ledges these fish are nomadic they roam aimlessly a lot of different places search those areas especially if you're going down a habitat like that an area flat to where not far off to the side or somewhere is that drop off that's an escape route for these fish watch for birds watch for you know signs of life if you look out there and you're staring out there for an hour and you don't see when it's glass out there and you don't see one ripple one movement one nothing there might be a chance there's nothing there but if you see mullet jumping and splashes and swirls 
and, and, and you know, birds are flying in, diving down. You see birds sitting over here. You see birds over there. You see an alligator here, an alligator there. You see pelicans. You see dolphins swimming around. They're not there for their health, you know. They're animals. Animals have certain things on their mind, and pleasure is not one of them, at least not all animals. Um, so the habitat that we're looking for is grass flats. Uh, redfish, trout, black drum love a grass flat. The turtle grass, um, all the grass that's out here with potholes in it, um, where there's grass, there is life. I, I feel so bad for my colleagues and friends that are down south where the Indian River is struggling. Um, man, I just, you know, I only hope and pray that that just turns around for y'all down there. Uh, that's a big, big deal. I can just imagine what it would do for this area up here. So that's, that's, you know, everybody's thinking about that. You know, nobody wants that to happen because that's a big trickle down domino effect, you know, leads to there to there that spreads out around the world, that kind of stuff. So nobody wants that to happen. Um, so the area that you're looking for are grass flats, flats, um, not necessarily structure, like if just if you see a mangrove tree line out here, it tapers off to shallow sometimes. So you can push down banks. Um, they, they tend to get up and feed next to those banks just for the fact that there's food sources up there and that kind of stuff. Trout, let's, let's talk about trout for just a minute. Let's separate them from black drum and from uh, redfish or red drum or bulls, whatever you want to call them. The the trout are a drum family. They're part of the same family. Redfish, trout, black drum, and whiting are all drum family. However, the trout are a little bit unique. I always classify them, their fight, like a bass because they breach, they splash around. You know, I have no idea why the state of Florida does not classify them as a game fish to stop the commercial fishing of them, for one. That just boggles my mind because that would be a semantic rule because I think they're a better game quality, a 35-inch trout is a better catch than a 35 inch redfish any day of the week but i digress here the trout are a lot of nocturnal feeders they're a lot of low light feeding especially the bigger ones they're a little bit wearier when you're out on the flats looking for them take your time they're going to be in the same areas that the redfish and drum are in except they're going to be you know almost like the lion and tiger they're going to be a little bit more cautious of you a little bit more weary of the lures that you're throwing towards them but those, you can fish deep ledges. You can troll or push down a drop off that's five, six feet deep, throw up towards the sandbar, and you'll get the little trout, the little bait fish, and all that kind of stuff hitting them. Um, I mean, they're up there feeding on the little bait fish and all that. You'll get the smaller trout. You know, you're not gonna catch, I mean, you're not gonna say not, but you won't typically catch the big 30 plus inch, 25, 26 inch trout along drop off bar. At least not here in the Mosquito Lagoon. I don't know about other areas, you know, Southern Florida, Fort Pierce, you know, Jacksonville, that may be different. Typically our bigger trout are way in back country, uh, especially in the winter time when the water gets crystal clear, you can spot them on potholes. It just, it gets your heart rate up when you see these fish that are that size just sitting there and you know, chances are that fish has never been caught. Another good way to catch trout is throughout the summertime get out there at two three in the morning midnight fish these lighted docks i go down to the dock where i live at at night and the shrimp are popping you can look down there and see thousands of trout swimming around mixed in with a few a few snook <laughs> like maybe one per every 10 miles you'll see one up here um, you'll see the trout up there just nailing the shrimp so fish the lighted docks at night um, so that's a habitat their structure they like the structure but they also like the flats um, so that, you know, so nighttime for them. Uh, the black drum, uh, the habitat for them is gonna be same as the redfish, except they're strictly mostly a crustacean feeder. I've caught a few in my life on mullet, mud minnows, that kind of stuff, the bigger ones. Um, typically a small, you know, a five, six, seven pounder is gonna be caught using, your best bet with them is when you're up on the flats looking for them, uh, you know, use the crabs, use a peeled shrimp, Use something like that and they're nibblers out here these poor fish have been pursued so much because everybody and their brothers want to keep one to eat it and they're not treating them as a game fish uh you know they're you know they were being pursued so much and i'm starting to believe that they're starting to evolve and they hear the sound of a boat engine 10 miles away they houdini they disappear so Typically, I'm, we're finding a lot of drum when we're in search of redfish. Normally, I don't go out there and say, hey, we're going to have a black jump drum charter today. We're typically looking for redfish trout, and then all of a sudden the drum show up or we come across some, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so the habitat for them is going to be the same thing. 
they also will hang around a lot of bridges and structure like the railroad track bridge in Titusville, the NASA Causeway bridges, because there's a lot of barnacles and there's crustaceans along the bridge pilings and the structure there, deep water. They tend to sit in deep water sometime. Just like the redfish, I'm not saying redfish don't like the deeper water. When they're spawning right now, they're out in five, six, seven foot deep of water. But, you know, I catch 90% of my redfish in 18 inches of water, you know, on average. So, and I think most sight fishermen and flats fishermen that get out there and pull the boat and actually throw artificials or fly fishing are gonna say the same thing, you know. Yeah, if you got a fish that's this big around, you know, got a girth of two foot, he's gonna need more than 18 inches of water just to live in, but that's just the theory of relativity there. So, with that said, you, we got area ha habitat, um, they're feeding, so now we need to talk about, the, the, let me tell you something about their feeding. Along with shrimp. If you could throw sight fish with a shrimp, unless you want to use artificial, everything eats a shrimp. I mean everything. Think about what I just said about the black drum. They're strictly crustacean eaters. Trout won't typically eat a lot of crabs. They might every now and then, but they'll eat a shrimp. Redfish will eat, you know, pretty much everything also. So if you're stuck with getting one bait and you're going to sight fish, throw to individual fish, you might come across a drum, trout, uh, black drum, red drum, or spotted sea trout get you the shrimp because everything eats that weed shrimp um, not everybody eats a mullet not everybody eats crab most people will eat shrimp um, unless you're allergic to them so with that said other than that you can use cut mullet live mullet um, if you can find and catch the little crabs you know about that big throw a live blue crab to these uh, redfish if you're out there sight fishing and you're able to hand pick go out to the beach or just pick up the crabs you put that on a little three odd two odd circle hook and when you see these fish tail and you throw that across them, slow, soft presentation, let that crab drop down into them, that's a guaranteed hookup because they're going to look at that and be like, what's this crab doing in the middle of us? We're, we're, that's what we eat. So, you know, it's like dropping a plate of chicken wings in front of somebody and them not eating it during a football game. I mean, right? So, let's talk now about the, um, the, uh, the, the, just the behavior of these fish. These fish, typically, this goes back to what I said about death from above. Uh, the behavior, typically redfish are spawning in, um, you know, the early fall, September, October. Uh, they get pursued heavily. If you're out there and catching these fish this time of year, um, please, please be very careful handling these fish. Um, this year in particular, we're seeing a lot of dead giant bulls being float, floating around in the river and everywhere because we're getting anglers that just I'm not saying they do it on purpose it, it just might be a knowledge thing they're holding up these fish with boga grips vertically and they're keeping them out of the water for too long um, they're spawning they're in shock now the picture you're taking 10 minutes to get the picture and then they're throwing them in the water and they're dying if you have to, if you know it's going to take too long to get that out or anything, forego the picture. Do the picture in the water. If that fish dies, your future of catching another one just goes down that every time. So the behavior of these fish is important to watch, meaning that they spook easily. Uh, take your time. Um, watch your presentation. Watch your shadows. Watch your, you know, your... Um, your accuracy is important when you're throwing to individual fish, so on and so forth. Trout are pretty spooky. The big trout are, are like, like I said numerous times, you read my fishing reports or anything. They're the lion, tigers, leopards, polar bears. They probably see you before you see them. You know, an eight plus pound trout didn't get that big because he'd probably never been caught. Cause somebody would have kept him by now. A redfish that big, you know, it only takes a couple years. A trout that big takes a long time. Um, redfish are very spooky, drum are very spooky. So the behavior part of this is almost like, I always tell people when they're on my boat, if they're hunters, if you ever turkey hunted, um, or deer hunted, but I'll use turkey, um, if you pretend while you're out there fishing, you're standing on the bow of that boat, and you're watching for fish, I want you to pretend that every fish that you see out there is a turkey. Because the saying is, if turkey could smell, none of them would be dead today. Turkey have phenomenal hearing, phenomenal um, eyesight. So these fish are the same way. So just when you're out there, this goes to sight fishing. If you're anchored down, you're just chunking out bait 100 yards from you. You got eight rods, and six hours later, something's going to come by. You're pretty much okay. But when you're up there pulling the boat, and you're looking for 
for these fish, apply those tur turkey tactics. Watch your movement, watch your shadows, watch your sound. Watch your, you know, when you're casting, the lure flies through the air. They see the, that go in front of the sun, they take off. I know that's extreme, but welcome to flats fishing and sight fishing shallow backcountry waters. So I'm pretty sure that in a nutshell is everything. Uh, watch over the next few weeks, the next month or so, I'll get to the next series. Um, the next one, I forget which one it is, but the one over lure selection and all that, it's going to be a little, you know, a little bit in depth and all that. I've already done a couple of videos on lure selection. You can go to my YouTube channel and you can go through the different uh, videos on that. You can go through different tackle. You can go through casting instruction. Uh, subscribe to me. You'll be alerted when the next video comes out. And should any of you have any questions or anything, look at my email. Feel free to email me, call me. I've gotten a bunch of calls. I always do. I always welcome. I'll try, and try to answer any of the comments here in the YouTube section. And other than that, I want to thank everybody again. I appreciate it. And everybody have a great day. Thank you.